Have you ever found yourself confused by the subtle differences in programming standards? It can be really frustrating, especially when it comes to understanding temporary object lifetimes in C++. If that sounds like you, stick around because today we're diving deep into this topic. I totally get it. Many developers have faced similar challenges when trying to grasp the nuances of C++ standards. You're not alone in this. This is a common point of confusion, and it's important to clarify these details. Let's set the stage with a specific question from one of our viewers. They asked, what's the difference in how cppreference.com and the C++11 standard describe the lifetime of temporary objects? This is a great question that many programmers ponder. So what's the issue here? The confusion arises from the language used in both cppreference.com and the C++11 standard regarding when the lifetime of a temporary object is extended. Let's break it down together. And trust me, you'll want to stick around until the end because I'll share a key insight that could change how you approach temporary objects in your code. To understand the lifetime of temporary objects in C++, the user should first recognize that when a reference is bound to a temporary or a base subobject of a temporary, the lifetime of that temporary is extended to match the lifetime of the reference. Next, the user should examine the example code provided. In this code, a temporary object is created when calling the function getFoo, and a reference is bound to one of its members. The user should then consider the implications of the standard's wording. According to the C++11 standard, the lifetime of the temporary should extend for the lifetime of the reference, but testing indicates otherwise. Finally, the user should reflect on the updates made to cppreference.com. The language has been clarified to emphasize that the lifetime of a temporary is extended under specific conditions, but exceptions still apply. Here's a fun fact. Did you know that understanding the intricacies of programming languages can sometimes feel like deciphering a secret code? It's all about the details. Now, let's look at the answers provided by other users. In response to the question about extending the life of a temporary object, the user clarifies that the verbiage in the C++ standard is not a defect. However, they point out that the compiler was non-conformant but this issue has been resolved in a newer version of G++. They also note that the language on cppreference.com was indeed a defect, which has since been updated. So is the language used by the standard a defect, or is it the compiler that's non-conformant? These are questions worth exploring further. And there you have it. Understanding the lifetime of temporary objects in C++ can be complex, but with the right insights, you can navigate these waters more confidently. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to subscribe for more programming tips and tricks.